Welcome to the second press conference of the day uh, with the impacts of childhood poverty in the first five years of a child's life. And to um, introduce the subject is the, is the symposium's organizer, Jack Shonkoff. And what we're going to be talking about today is really digging deeper into understanding what it is about um, poverty specifically and, and adversity more generally in the early years that makes it uh, particularly important for long-term outcomes in uh, not just educational achievement, but uh, economic productivity and also health. Our, our last speaker is Thomas Boyce, who is a paediatrician at the University of British Columbia, Vancouver, and he's going to talk about poverty and biology. Good morning. <clears throat> One of the uh, most central and, and naughty problems of uh, this association between socioeconomic status and long-term outcomes is the problem of mechanism, of, of how we make sense and make connections between these early risk factors and the long-term outcomes. And I'm going to be trying to uh, pull together the story of the, the biology, the, the neurogenomic biology that we think is beginning to um, uh, show linkages um, that explain some of these associations. Thank you very much. We will now take questions. Dick. Hi, Dick Alstrom, Irish Times. This is, in a way, this is kind of like back to the old nature versus nurture. Um, although we are st start, starting to get now biological <coughs> responses from living in that environment. But can they all be written off as just, okay, there's more stress there and therefore these are the responses that you'd see in stress? Or is there something different from that? The, the nature versus nurture uh, debate um, from my standpoint is all but over um, and uh, witness to that is the is this revolution in uh, interest in epigenetic um, kinds of uh, changes in the conformation the structural character of DNA which which is the very point in human biology where uh, nature and nurture come together and change the expression of stress reactivity and other biological phenomena What's really exciting about the introduction of biology into this area right now is to provide an opportunity to enhance our theories of change and provide an opportunity to think fresh and anew about what we might do to further increase the impact of, of these interventions early on. And this is where Tom's work is so important because what biology is telling us is that maybe the reason we're not getting a bigger bang for the buck on early education as rich as it might be, is because there are kind of, there is a biological embedding of adversity in the early years that's literally disrupting brain circuits, that's affecting the cardiovascular system, that's affecting the immune system, that's affecting metabolic systems. Um, not enough to shut everything down, but enough to, to in some way diminish the impact of rich learning experiences as much as they might be. And so it calls for rethinking our policy approaches. Helen Pearson from Nature. Um, I'm interested in the question about mechanisms. If you find that poor income is associated, say, with some kind of specific epigenetic change um, in the genome, how do you tease out the multiple ways the environment has left epigenetic marks on the genome by that stage? Well, in, in many ways, we face the same dilemma with finding associations between epigenetic changes and exposure to disadvantaged environments in early life that we, that we face with associations between socioeconomic status in early life and long-term achievement and productivity outcomes. We don't, we don't really know what aspect of exposure to low, um, uh, low income deprived environments in early life are, are having the, that particular effect. But as we begin to, to know more and more about the way that these epigenetic changes happen, the way in which genes are turned on and off in terms of uh, gene expression, uh, this is what Jack was alluding to. The more we're going to be able to understand about the particular elements of those environments that are the operative uh, active ingredient, if you will. And we have, you know, we have some hunches about that, but, but it, is a, it is a problem of the first order that, um, that we need to be addressing. Let me, let me try another example. Jack Shonko. Making it very, so, uh, you know, our, our hope is that as the field continues, as each of these fields continues to move forward and then converge, and that's, that's part of the excitement of putting an economist and a developmental psychologist and a pediatrician at the same table and bringing a neuroscientist in and a, and a geneticist, and to say, okay, this is not nature versus nurture anymore. Obviously, they're intertwined, but our policies are still very compartmentalized. They're, they're educational policies, they're education policies, 
their welfare policy. So it really, this is a wonderful example of science being able to lead the way to kind of rethink the framework for trying to produce better outcomes for children growing up in poverty. That's, that's our basic message here today because all of these fields tell us how important the early childhood years are. Up until now, it hasn't been very good at telling us, so what should we do that's different? And now this is part of the message, that we need to not only enrich experiences, but we need to do something about diminishing um, kind of adversity and its effects.